You know, we've got one of the earliest crops we've ever had this year. Uh, we had cotton planted in March, which is crazy. I've never seen that before. Uh, this cotton was, was planted in April, uh, to my recollection. But uh, as you look out there, you'll see a lot of blooms towards the top of that plant. And that's kind of what we're seeing statewide. We had early planting window. We had the majority of our crop planted by the 1st of May. And that is really unusual, uh, especially when you look at last year and we didn't even get to start till after the 20th of May. Uh, so we, we've got a very early crop. We have set a lot of fruit on the lower part of this plant uh, everywhere. And so we, we actually started fruiting this year on nodes four, which is, you know, you don't hardly ever see that. And and that's almost too low. I don't even know if the picker can pick that. So, uh, you know, we started on five and six on average, and we have a lot of retention on second and third position this year on, on uh, you know, just about every fruit and branch. Uh, so we've got a heavily loaded crop. You know, we've done some position counting, and even on, uh, I've had a lot of calls about, man, my, my cotton, we only have 16, 17 total nodes, when usually I have 21 to 24. And, you know, uh, we can make good cotton on cotton like that, especially when we, we did some counts the other day. We were averaging 22 to 24 position counts on 16 no cotton. I mean, that's, uh, that's a lot of seconds and thirds making that up. So uh, with the cloudy weather we've had and, and the rains, I'm sure, you know, this field in particular, we were here one day raining. You can see all the dry bloom tags down through there. I mean, we had a tremendous shed on some second and third positions in this particular field last week. Uh, and I, I'm sure, and a lot of that's because of the load. And, uh, you know, we've been taking note above white flower counts, and we've actually, the terminal's grown some because of the rain. So we're actually gaining some extra nodes now. So, uh, but, you know, I think in average, we got a pretty good crop this year if we can hold it and, and we can get it in the in the module made and, and sent to the gin. Uh, down here, up through to the I 40 corridor and up, you know, it looks in general really good. Some of our worst looking cotton is probably in northeast Arkansas. We had a tremendous Tremendous time getting it started, uh, getting a good stand, uh, keeping the thrips off of it and the disease off of it this year. So, you know, if we had a place that's struggling, it's probably northeast Arkansas and the Boot Hill, Missouri here in the mid south. So, you know, we're fortunate we can irrigate. Uh, I know in Tennessee where they can't, we talked about return crops and rice. They have a return crop. They don't want one, but they've got one anyway on cotton because uh, they had a crop made and it stopped growing. And then uh, they got some rain this last week as well and it started growing again. So they're going to have two different crops on the same stock but you know they're going to get because we're so early they're going to have the potential to make on both of them probably so uh, it, it's good for everybody's rain in, on in general kind of helped everybody out over here but really what we're looking at uh, getting back to the project here we've got an irrigation study and I really want to thank uh, David Roberts and, and Larry and and Dr. Bryant for allowing us to do some work here on the station it's a great place to do work and uh, and David has done a great job keeping up with these plots and uh, we asked him to do a lot and uh, he sure ha every year he comes through for us and because we can't be here all the time but we you know this is a great place to do irrigation work in cotton because uh, the field is so short we can get our four replications in and keep water off of the plots we don't need to water so it's it's really good place to do that and and uh, we do have some non-irrigated plots out here the, the first set yeah and then you'll see some red flags uh, kind of through the canopy there there's another set you know it's hard to tell with the rain we've got so I don't know how much we're really going to get out of this irrigation study this year but in years past it's, it's provided us a lot of data now uh, in years past what we've done uh, four years ago with a, a work through Cotton Incorporated uh, we did a timing study so we wanted to look at when is the you know the most critical point to start putting water on that crop and, and what we found is that week to 10 days, in some years, a dry year like this we had in June, sometimes it's 14 days, but the critical point is right before bloom. We're talking 10 to 14 days before bloom. And, and, you, and when we think about it, just, you know, this year, we didn't have much rain at all in June, and we had to water some up, so we started a lot earlier than that this year. So every year is going to be different in the Mid-South, but if we have enough moisture to get it going, generally the crop doesn't require a lot of moisture, cotton doesn't, until we start squaring. And when you see that terminal slow down and those squares getting big towards the top of the terminal, we know that our terminal growth has stopped 
for the most part. Okay, The idea of starting early means that I prevent that terminal from stopping to grow. Okay, I want to continue that terminal on its growing. I want to continue my, my, the building of nodes above my first fruiting position and that keeps me on track to being earlier. It doesn't mean like this non-irrigated cotton here that it can't recover but in the end what you end up doing is shedding more fruit and having a later crop. Is, is what it boils down to. So we want to stay on time. If we if we early, you know, right now spider mites and plant bugs are hitting us pretty hard across the state. The earlier we are, the less we have to spray for those type of pests, and then budworm, bollworm complexes move in, and other worm species. So you know, early is good. Um, but what we've got here is uh, sensor-based irrigation, okay? These are smart field sensors. This is fairly new technology. And, and you can see them out there on stakes above the, the cotton canopy. And what we're measuring is canopy temperature. What those measure is, is canopy temperature, and they're all linked uh, to this weather station over here. And the algorithm that Smartfield uses takes the canopy temperature in effect as well as uh, air temperature, soil moisture, uh, evapotranspiration, all these different uh, things and puts them together and makes a recommendation based on stress when to water the crop. That's their idea behind this technology, okay? Now we haven't, this is the second year I guess that we have worked with these sensors, uh, but, but what we're comparing them to, we have five different varieties planted in this field. And the reason we wanted to look at different varieties is because we found out the last several years these varieties act a lot different to irrigation. And, and some in particular like 499, Kyle. 375 uh, tends to act a little different uh, to irrigation than 499 does. And, and we found that with Stonewall 5288. So we've got five varieties planted across here and what we're looking at is either non-irrigated or we're looking at uh, our two inch deficit which is our current state recommendation for cotton on a silt loam soil uh, based on our irrigation scheduler program that, that we can find on the website. So we've got a uh, two inch scheduled deficit irrigation and then we have this smart field uh, irrigation timing and, and what we're doing is these sensors there's a ton of them out here and then the weather station all link up to a modem and that modem uh, in their smart field program I can go online and uh, type in my little login and password and it'll show me the temperature uh, the canopy temperature and then the stress level based on their algorithm that they have of those plots so I know that well when it reaches this threshold that they've developed, and this is a this is a work in progress. It's by no means ready to be taken to a field, but based on their recommendation on those parameters, I need to water right now, and I can look online and find that out. Okay, and without even having to go to a field, and we know that you know with farms getting bigger, and and the increase in technology that we have with smartphones and all this, you know, there's a lot more farms managed now uh, from a computer it seems like than there are actually on the turn row. You know, we can turn on wells up with the phone, you know, now, if they're rigged up that way. So, you know, this will give us an opportunity if it does work, we can do some pretty good field monitoring uh, based on the stress level and, and determine which field needs irrigating uh, when. Because when we we look at it on a grower basis, you know, I've done several irrigation studies on grower farms and their schedule is every week I water this set, you know, and that's and that's practical for them and, and it really on our schedule it, a lot of times especially during peak bloom it matches up pretty well but uh, but you know we can be better than that we can do better than that on saving water and, and saving some money with diesel fuel I think uh, and, and th these centers may help us do that so uh, you know I, we're, I'm pretty interested to see what uh, what comes of this but uh, you know irrigation work is frustrating for me it's good for the growers when we get rain but when we get rain that's frustrating to me so it's a lot better to do irrigation work in Texas Bill that's that's the best place to do irrigation work but anyway that's what we've got going on uh, I don't know how much time I have left but okay well I'll go ahead and take some questions in and uh, we can talk about anything it doesn't have to be about this How's the crop across the state overall? Good? I'd, I'd rate it as good to, you know better than good between good and excellent I guess overall um, like I said we've got some trouble in northeast Arkansas I hope we can uh, kind of catch up with up there but 
overall, I think it's going to be really good, and we need a good crop because, you know, last year at this time, we probably had 80% of our crop booked at over a dollar. This year, we have maybe 20% of our crop booked at 75 cents, and, you know, the, the, the market's not helping us right now. So.